These are my three go-to greens that are easy to get on the plate and offer a lot of versatility to build out a balanced meal. Starting off with the easiest and most underrated vegetable side, in my opinion, and that's baby bok choy. When you get a nice, fresh batch of baby bok choy, the path of getting this from raw vegetable to cooked vegetable side is as easy as cleaning it, blanching it in salted boiling water for one minute, and that's it. One more time if you missed that, blanching it in salted boiling water for one minute, and that's it. You might think that's too simple, like that's not even cooking, but try this simple preparation before you judge it. My wife is actually a pretty picky eater, and this quickly became one of her favorite vegetable sides as well. The mustardy flavor of the baby bok choy complements rice and meat dishes so well. Even in this weeknight bowl I recently made of brown rice, purple sweet potato, and roasted mushrooms, the bok choy acts as the fresh greens to balance out the bowl. It also works great with different seasonings, like a little sesame oil for a Korean spin, or sriracha, which is my personal favorite. Give this one a shot, I know you'll love it, just as much as you already like our next greens, the perennial favorite, kale. Kale is one of my favorite vegetables because of its ability to absorb flavor and its shelf life throughout the week in the fridge, even after prep. To start our prep, I'm separating the leaves from the stems and putting the leafy parts in a salad spinner to wash. The biggest tip I have for kale, and this is a pretty common one, but you have to massage your kale before dressing it. I like to drizzle the kale with olive oil before massaging, as the oil is essentially the first part of our dressing. I'll massage the kale for about a minute or so until I feel the olive oil penetrate the leaves and when my hands can run through the kale with ease. It's worth tasting at this stage to make sure the texture is right and see whether you need more oil. And all I do next is add some kosher salt and squeeze on some lemon. After tasting one more time, it's best to let the kale sit for about 15 minutes to let all the flavors get to know each other better. Once 15 minutes has passed, you're ready to serve. Here I'm making another brown rice bowl with my kale and some curry chickpeas that I was able to prepare in less than 30 minutes for a quick and easy lunch for Ashley and me. Now this next recipe is my personal favorite and something I became obsessed with after experiencing Korean barbecue out here in LA for the first time. This Korean spinach is often part of the banchan at the beginning of the meal, right when you sit down at the Korean barbecue restaurant. To me, it's the perfect combination of bitter greens and that fatty, nutty sesame oil flavor with some soy sauce. There are so many different ways of preparing this dish, but I always stick with the simple version that only features the core ingredients. Of course, we're going to start out with one bunch of whole spinach. Fresh Korean spinach or Taiwanese spinach work even better here, but use whatever you can find. After washing the spinach, I'm blanching it in salted boiling water for one minute, just like we did with the baby bok choy. After, I'm immediately straining the spinach in a colander and rinsing with cold water. Placing the hot spinach in an ice bath is ideal to retain the bright color, but I find that rinsing with cold water gets the job done. Once the spinach has cooled down, I'm getting the mixing bowl ready next to the sink and we'll start balling up some spinach in small batches and trying my best to squeeze out as much water as possible. You're not going to get all the water out, so move on when it feels most of it is out. We're doing this so that our sesame oil and soy sauce will rehydrate the spinach and will absorb all the flavor. The next step is to separate the clumps of spinach back into single strands. I'll then add one tablespoon of sesame oil. Use less oil if you're trying to be mindful of the fat content. I'll then add a few dashes of soy sauce and a pinch of salt. Not too much though, as the sesame oil should be the prominent flavor here. And to finish it off, I'll sprinkle on some toasted sesame seeds to highlight the sesame flavor. What I'm making here is a Korean bibimbap Bowl, which is white rice, our spinach, some kimchi, Korean barbecue brisket, and of course, a fried egg to top it off. This is the most versatile greens of the three. I've had it with so many different meals, and it goes great with the overnight adobo from my previous video. So those are my three favorite greens to make at home. I hope you give at least one of these a try. If there are any quick and tasty greens recipes that you love, make sure to comment them below. I'd love to do a follow-up video with some viewer suggestions, or maybe there's a vegetable that you have a hard time preparing yourself. Comment that below, maybe we can tackle that together. If you end up making any of these three tasty greens, and I have a good feeling you will, make sure to tag me on Instagram, at MattyTry. Thank you so much for watching. Just getting to the end of this video supports the channel a lot. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back next week with more tips and recipes for all you home cooks out there. So I'll see you in the next one.